Hello, we will start this webinar in about 30 seconds. We're just waiting for a few more people to pop in. People are coming in quickly, so we will get started momentarily. All right, welcome everybody. I know we still have people coming in, but it's the end of the day and I really want to respect the time of everybody who's joined us so far. Um, Happy New Year and welcome. And um, we're so pleased to welcome all of our employer groups today from both PEB and SEB organizations. My name is Kristen Steinoff. I'm the Washington Wellness Program Manager. And I'll be serving as host today, so I'll give a brief introduction and then turn it over to the rest of the team. Before we get started, I want to go over a few things so you know how to participate in today's webinar. We're using GoToWebinar, as you can see, and you are listening using your computer's speaker system by default. If you prefer to join over the phone, just choose from the audio panel telephone and the dial-in information will pop up right away automatically. We're going to have over 100 attendees today, so we've muted all of your lines. You can submit questions by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel, and you can send them anytime during the presentation. If we can answer them quickly in writing, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll be collecting questions and address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. If you have any technical assistance problems, you can also put those questions into the question panel and we'll do our best to help you. We are recording this webinar and we'll post it along with the PowerPoint to the meetings and materials section of our webpage. And if you can see the handout section of the GoToWebinar panel, we did post the PDF of those slides in the handout section, so you can grab them right away if you like. We're going to email all of you within about a week once all of those materials are up on the Meetings and Materials page so that you can access the recording and the slides. And now, let me introduce you to the team. We have four health promotion consultants who each support specific employer groups. Heidi Helsley works with school organizations. Specifically, she works with K-12, charter schools, and educational service districts participating in SEB. Erin Huff works with state agencies. Ron Kim works with public employers. And Pam Walker works with higher education institutions. I already introduced myself. I'm Kristen Steimanoff. And Kurt Hannes is also very much a member of our team. He's a senior strategic account executive at LimeAid, and he helps us make well-being activities come to life in smart health. Unfortunately, Pam Walker can't join us today, so I'm going to do my best to cover her material, the material that she prepared for you later when we get to her section. We're going to cover quite a lot today. Some of this will be a review for some of you, but I promise all of you will hear at least a few things that are brand new. I'll start by giving you an overview of our program. Then I will turn it over to Ron, who will talk about the Smart Health Worksite Wellness Roadmap and the Zoe 8 Award. Erin's gonna describe the Diabetes Prevention Program and resources available. And then I'll step in for Pam to talk about our program's tobacco prevention and cessation work and about the training plan that Washington Wellness is preparing for you in 2021. Then we'll turn things over to Kurt from LimeAid, and he'll give you an insider's tour of what's coming in Smart Health for the first and second quarters of the year. Finally, Heidi's gonna wrap us up by sharing some wonderful successes that are the direct result of our partnerships with many of you. 
So this is going to be fun. We're giving you a really high level overview today. There are lots of additional resources to explore, but at a minimum, by the end of this webinar, we hope that you'll be able to do at least these three things. We really want to make sure that you can use the Smart Health Worksite Wellness Roadmap to target at least two areas for improvement in your own wellness program. We want you to be able to describe at least three types of resources or support you can get from us on the Washington Wellness Team. And we really hope that you'll be able to identify and promote at least two Smart Health activities that fit well with your own program's priorities. And remember, as we go along, if you have questions, put them in the chat box. We're going to try to hard to keep things on time um, as we go along so that we have time to address your questions at the end. I'll give you a quick introduction to our program. Washington Wellness is a program of the Washington State Healthcare Authority. And as I mentioned in the introduction at the beginning, um, we support organizations participating both in the Public Employees Benefits Board Program and the School Employees Benefits Board Program. The goal of Washington Wellness is to build, grow, and sustain effective worksite wellness programs that maximize not only individual but also organizational health and well being. We really try hard to offer you easy, engaging, and ready-to-use resources so that you can quickly promote wellness initiatives in your own program. We provide trainings and webinars like this one to all of our coordinators and wellness champions, and we offer one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to individual programs through the work of our health promotion consultants. Finally, before I turn it over to Ron, I want to share how we think about the importance of prioritizing well-being at work. When organizations and managers invest in well-being, employees feel more engaged. They understand that their employers care about them and they can feel more prepared to bring their best selves to work, knowing that they can also take their best selves back home. So this can lead to better productivity among your employees, better retention because they wanna stay with you, and a better experience for everyone, including any Washingtonians you serve. So with that, I will turn the floor over to Ron to tell you about the Smart Health Worksite Wellness Roadmap. Okay, thanks. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Excited to be able to share more okay. about the roadmap with you. So let's just jump right in. Next slide, please. So I always like to start, um, you know, addressing the why, right? Why does this matter? And I came up with three reasons why I think you should definitely use the roadmap. The first one is that it's based on best practices. You know, the concepts within the roadmap are from industry thought leaders, such as the Wellness Council of America, also known as WELCOA, along with the Chapman Institute and others that our team have researched and explored along the way. The roadmap is a step-by-step -step project plan for your wellness program. What we've done is we've turned this into an easy to use online checklist. And the idea is to help not only programs that are just starting off, but programs that have been doing this for a while. So the roadmap gives you the framework of seeing key areas to target. And for those more mature programs, you know, you can build on what you've done, right? So it's not only what you did, but how well you can do it the next time. And so moving along to the next slide here, how the roadmap helps. You know, it, it really does save you time because you don't have to research and figure this out on your own, right? That's, that's what we're here for. We're here to support your work. It offers you tangible tips and samples, ideas to complete the tasks that we call out that are key steps to the wellness program. And finally, you can build it as you go. So it doesn't happen overnight, especially if you're just starting off, right? Start small, pick a step or two to target, and as you work your way along the year, you can try to add another one. For those groups who have been doing this for a while, you know, some over a couple decades, I'm sure they can tell you that, you know, it didn't all happen within the first year, okay? So don't feel like you have to complete all eight steps at once, it's gonna naturally progress year after year. 
So moving along to the next slide, this is our one page visual of the eight steps. You know, I know there's a lot of content here. I don't really expect you to be able to hone in or read anything specific right now, uh, but I just wanted to give you a general sense of what the steps are um, and what's involved. And really, not only is the roadmap customized to support your efforts, right? Things that we've uh, integrated in terms of utilizing key resources such as Smart Health, but really it's a framework for our own team and the work that we've done to support you. So let me pinpoint a couple of the steps and explain to you how that happened. So on the next um, slide, you'll see step one, get leadership support. And so for us, you know, we've coordinated with the governor's office over the years to highlight his vocal support for this body of work. You know, he's been um, so helpful in terms of sending out emails, uh, recording videos, and hosting events. So getting leadership support is so important. On the next slide, it's step two. It's all about forming a team. And I highly encourage you, especially at your own organization, definitely work on this and continue to build your team because you know more people will help extend your reach. And for us, our most important teammates are you. We really rely on your efforts engaging your employees um, to help share the value of wellness at work. And the third one I wanted to zero in on is our step eight, share results. And really sharing results is just about circling back with your staff, with your leaders, and letting them know, hey, this is, this is all the great stuff we've done over the years, right? Over this specific year. And for us, you know, we often share our results with others. Um, one example is, we've created multiple reports for the Washington State Legislature, um, letting them know about the effectiveness of smart health. And so moving along, you know, so using the roadmap really um, is our application for our annual ZO8 award. And so with just a little bit of extra work, right, you just click a few buttons, submit your story to us. That gives us an opportunity to recognize your great story over the year. So on the next slide, I'm gonna dive into why I think it's totally worth it for you to try for the ZO8 award. There's a lot of reasons, but I came up with three. The first one is that it's not an all or nothing review, right? So it's not as if everybody's applying and we're just picking one winner. We recognize that not everyone is starting from the same place. And really our goal is to help you build your program year after year. A second reason is that, again, it's online, it's easy to apply. You know, you're welcome to use the roadmap just as your own guide. If you don't feel comfortable, you know, applying that first year, by all means, put it to use. But if you're already using the roadmap, like I said, with just a few extra steps, you're gonna be able to submit it and share your story with us to apply. And then finally, this gives you a chance to share your success back with the folks that you support, right? To let them know that, you know, we've, we've all been involved in this great body of work. We've been recognized by the Washington State Healthcare Authority for our efforts, and we're gonna try to do even more the next year. So on the next slide, this is where you can learn more about both. Um, where you'll find more details about the roadmap, you'll go to our Build a Wellness Program webpage. For those who want to dive deeper into the ZO8 Award, uh, our webpage is named Tracking Success. And so with that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Aaron Huff, who will be uh, sharing with you about diabetes prevention. Great, thank you, Ron, um, for that overview of the, the, the Worksite Wellness Roadmap. Um, the, the next part of our 2021 preview is, um, you know, like as Ron mentioned, is just to kind of uh, briefly touch base on the diabetes prevention program. For some of you, this will um, be new information. And uh, uh, for some of you, it might just be a kind of a review and, and a good refresher. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so a little bit about why we should do the diabetes prevention program. There is many factors that affect diabetes in the workplace. Some of those factors are, you know, having a sedentary work environment, um, shift schedules, which you know don't allow adequate time to rest, 
uh, limitations in physical activities related to the job, and then um, also the availability of um, healthy foods. Um, another uh, uh, related part for why we should do the program is related to the cost to treat diabetes, which is highly significant. It's estimated in Washington state that 6.7 billion a year is spent on diabetes cost. And this is directly including uh, direct related healthcare expenses and productivity loss. And so, and speaking a little bit about lost productivity, there's a few key factors that go into effect with that. One of those is related to time loss, which employees end up having to take sick time, um, which reduces productivity. There's a higher turnover rate in positions. And then unfortunately, you know, there's um, a reduced morale. And so all of these factors really do affect, um, you know, kind of the reason why diabetes is such an important issue. Next slide, please. So now that we kind of understand a little bit about why it's an issue, let's talk about why promoting the diabetes prevention program is really important. Um, the DPP programs offered through the health plans um, are all CDC recognized lifestyle change programs with a proven record of reducing body weight. That on average, it's about five to seven percent per person. And if you couple that with um, around 150 minutes of exercise each week, it reduces one's possibility of getting type 2 diabetes by over 58 percent. So um, huge in terms of um, what these programs actually do. Um, also, you know, it aligns a little bit with our governor's executive order. Um, uh, for those of you who might be familiar with that, you know, there is some uh, language in there and a lot of support from our governor to um, develop and to participate in uh, comprehensive diabetes prevention programs, which I'll talk about a couple of those here in, in just a moment. And then lastly, um, you know, having these programs, there is a direct uh, link to, by participating in these, we reduce, um, you know, the, uh, the medical costs associated uh, with these programs. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's dive into um, a little bit about what some of these programs are. Our, our first program um, is for our PEB and SEB populations who have either Kaiser or have UMP as their medical plan. Uh, the program is called OMADA. It's available at no cost for subscribers and dependents who are 18 years of age and older um, and who are enrolled in an eligible PEB or SEB medical plan. Um, individuals also cannot be enrolled in Medicare. And you know, to participate in the program, OMADA does have like a one minute screener that they ask participants to take to make sure that the program is right for them. So as long as that happens, you'll be eligible for the program. Um, with OMADA, you get a full virtual program with a dedicated health coach, a wireless scale, and a supportive uh, peer group. Next slide, please. We've been doing the OMADA program for several years. Um, just last year, here's just a couple of stats related to that. Um, in 2020, we had over 21,148 pounds lost, um, you know, combined from all of our members. The average engagement with AMADA is about 34.7 per week. And by engagement, this is the number of times um, members log in, how many times they weigh themselves, and then also um, you know, how many times they message to their uh, coach. AMADA does also have a participation rate of 87%, which is really great. And then also, I just want to read you a, a quote that we received from one of our PEB members. Um, this is what they said. I think it was after I'd been on the program for about a month, my weight dropped below 200 for the first time. It was the first time in four to five years that I could remember seeing a one as the first number in my weight. I was surprised, I was happy, and I was even more confident that I was going to be able to take the weight that the program had prescribed for me. I think it was then that I didn't make it to my goal, even, it will, even though it would be worth it and I would continue on the program. So a very powerful statement coming from uh, one of our uh, our PEB members. Next slide, please. Um, the other program that we have is a brand new program. This program is for our SEB members, and it is for those um, SEB employees who have Primera as their health plan. Um, the name of the program is Livongo. Um, it's very similar to the OMADA program. Um, Livongo does combine live expert coaching with smart technologies that use um, that support employees to living healthier lives. With Lavongo, you get a wireless scale, um, you have an easy way to track your food and activities, and you have um, a really comprehensive app which allows you to stay in contact with your coach and your peers. 
Um, similar to the OMADA program, uh, Livongo also offers um, a, a, um, employees with a, a kind of a, a comprehensive community learning and one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching. Next slide, please. So now that you've kind of heard a little bit about the two programs that we have, we do have um, resources available to help you promote these programs. Um, you, if you want to take, you can take a screenshot of the two links that we have there. They are specific for both our PEB and SEB population, as some of the program codes are very specific. But for, um, for the Yomada program, uh, we have a lot of materials posted up on our website. You'll be able to find flyers, uh, banners. Uh, there's even a welcome video that shows you how to use the program and um, different uh, resources to help you promote it. We're currently working on getting some of the Lavongo materials up. So for those who are interested in promoting the Lavongo program, check back for those um, um, later on as we start releasing those onto our website. So lots of materials to help you promote it. Also feel free to reach out to your Washington Wellness Consultant as they'll be able to help you promote the program as well. Um, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Kristen to talk a little bit about the Tobacco Prevention and Cessation Program. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, you know, I really feel so great about the fact that we have these options available for members to help prevent or manage their diabetes, and we're just thrilled to be able to support employers in supporting those resources. And also, with the Smart Health Worksite Wellness Roadmap that, that Ron showed you, it's such an incredible resource for anyone, no matter where they are with their wellness program. And the Zoate Award, for those who want to pursue it, is a great way to showcase your accomplishments. So I'm really glad we had a chance to talk about those two things. So as I mentioned, Pam Walker would normally be giving this section of the presentation, but since she is not able to be here, I'm going to pinch it for her. Um, let me do a sound check real quick. Does it sound okay? Can one of my team members just say yay or nay? Sounds great. Yes, it does. Thank okay. you. I just got a weird <laughs> thing. Okay, so reducing tobacco and nicotine use is one of our greatest opportunities to help people live longer and healthier lives. And even though in Washington State there have been significant declines in tobacco use and a big increase in public awareness about the harmful effects of smoking, tobacco use is still the leading cause of preventable death in Washington State. And this leads to devastating consequences for our health and for our state's economy. So Washington Wellness is continuing its work with the Washington State Department of Health Tobacco Program and with other stakeholders to prevent tobacco and nicotine use and also to help provide support and assistance to people who want to quit. We'll definitely keep you updated and informed about developments around partnerships and prevention, and vapor products, policy, laws and regulations, um, health equity with respect to tobacco prevention and cessation, tobacco cessation benefits for members and their eligible dependents, and promotional resources. We're going to be providing you with additional resources and toolkits along the way so that you can prevent tobacco, so that you can promote tobacco prevention and cessation in your workplaces. And we'll also continue to share information about those benefits available to members. There are lots of resources on our website, both for PEB and for SEB. If you grab that handout in the handouts box or when you access our meetings and materials page, you should be able to click on the links. But you can also go and just search for Living Tobacco Free PEB and Living Tobacco Free SEB and you should find some really good resources to help you right now. And now I'm going to shift gears and talk for a moment about the trainings that we offer through Washington Wellness. For 2021, we are going to continue to draw on information we learned from our training evaluations, data from our state's Smart Health Wellbeing Assessment Report, and input from, from all of you, from wellness coordinators, from wellbeing champions, from advisory group meetings, we're going to use all of that data to really identify training topics that are most relevant for you as we also try to continually improve the quality of the trainings that we offer. What we want to do with each of these trainings is first present data, present good information based on good science 
that really makes the case as to why this topic is important to address and what the impact on employee well-being is in the workplace. Second, we always want to make sure that you know what you need to know, that you have the knowledge you need about these topics and the most promising practices available for addressing it in the workplace. And finally, and maybe most importantly, we always want to be giving you tools you can use to take action. This can include resources and toolkits and other things that you can use to implement promotional campaigns in your own workplace. So from the input and data that we've gotten from all of you, we're going to continue to offer quarterly webinars. Um, and we've made some modifications in hopes of more closely meeting your needs right now and your interests. We are gonna be offering live webinars each quarter. This one today, the 2021 preview, serves as our first quarterly webinar. But we'll be doing one every quarter and we will record them all so you can listen later if the scheduled time doesn't work for you. And we're going to play with the format a little bit and try to offer you more opportunities to learn directly from your peers during these webinars. And of course, we'll continue to provide resources and toolkits that you can use for your own workplace wellness plans. We're also working on a plan to help new wellness coordinators and champions and wellness committee members um, start or further develop their wellness programs. So we're going to be offering a series of short pre-recorded webinars that focus just on one or two topics and present lots of resources for self-study. Self so we hope that you will stay tuned for more information about that and either share it with your new staff or do some refresher work for yourself. And with that, Kurt, I am going to turn it over to you and let you show your own slides because I know you also are going to show us your website. Yes. All right, so Kurt, you should have access now. There you go. Great. Can someone confirm that you're able to see my screen and hear me okay? We see and hear everything is fantastic. Okay, great. Well, I'm happy to join this group. I know I've, I've met several of you at uh, meetings before, so it's nice to reconnect. I'm here to talk with this group about um, the Smart Health Program for 2021 and really give you guys a behind the scenes look at what's coming. So I'm going to cover some of the data and research that's foundational to Limeade. I'm going to talk about some state of Washington specific data that has informed our strategy. I'll give a quick overview of our strategy. And then as time permits, I will jump in and do um, a live demo and show some of you the activities that are live right now and um, give you guys a, a look for, for what's out there in the wild. So I wanna start by giving some background on Limeade and some of the research that's so foundational to what we do. Some of this will look familiar to you, to many of you. I know many wellness coordinators were able to attend the ZOE 8 Awards back in 2019 and Dr. Laura Hamill gave a presentation on the science of care. So I'm here gonna give my best Laura Hamill impression. <laughs> uh, please forgive any background noise. I have a baby here at home in Kirkland. So if it's a little noisy, apologize for that. Um, so let's, let's jump right in. This is really the why. Um, for for Limeade. And you see here, this is our brand promise with Limeade, every employee knows their company cares about them. And the term care can seem funny to some people. It's something that's not traditionally talked a lot about in the workplace very often. We've done a lot of research on the concept of care in the workplace, and it really has massive impacts on work and employee well-being. And as we know, employee well-being has a lot of direct ties to organizational results. And I'm just showing some of the, the things here on the, on the page. I'm not gonna read through it word by word, but employees that feel their organization, organization cares about them are less likely to turn over, they handle stress and burnout better, they recommend their organization as a great place to work, and they have higher feelings of inclusion and having inclusive workplaces. And as you dig in, some of the research we've done around this, 
in the areas of well-being, engagement, and inclusion, all really important topics that I know a lot of you care a lot about. Um, you can see some of the statistics in the favorability ratings on these different topics of well-being, engagement, inclusion, when organizations do a great job of showing care for their employees, and also when they don't do a great job of showing care for their employees. It's also related to managing stress and feelings of burnout. You can see some of these statistics are really pretty shocking. And this next one is really interesting to me when you look at intent to stay and likelihood to recommend your organization as a great place to work. Look at this, this last one. Um, organizations that care for their employees are 10 times more likely to recommend their company as a great place to work, I should say employees. Um, are 10 times more likely to recommend their organization as a great place to work when they feel their organization cares about them. Care is really at the heart of well-being. So transitioning over to well-being and why it matters, we have a holistic approach. And we know that what happens in one of the areas of life affects others. What happens at work affects you at home. What happens in your body affects what happens in your head. And this is backed up by a lot of external research. So not just Lyman's research, but you see some of the statistics here on the, the right hand side about the percentage of illnesses that have stress as a contributor or employees that have their work affected by what happens in their personal life or missing work due to financial emergencies. So um, we really take a, a good, long, holistic approach to well-being as we approach it. And then also we know well-being is so closely tied to employee engagement. And you can see some of the research here around employees with high well-being versus low well-being and their favorability ratings for enjoying work, being loyal to their teams, and also recommending their organization as a great place to work. So thinking about 2021, um, we're going all in on emotional and mental well-being this year. And with this approach, um, pretty much everything we do here at LimeAid is founded in research and we try to everything, map everything to data that we're receiving. So through the well-being assessment, we receive a lot of direct feedback from state employees and smart health users. And Digging into it, we were looking at what are areas that folks are struggling? What are the things that people are basically, through the well-being assessment, raising their hand and saying, I need support in this area? So it boiled down to three buckets. Um, and I'm showing this is some of the direct results from the well-being assessment um, for all smart health users. And we really honed in on these areas where people are scoring the lowest. So managing stress and anxiety and managing depression. And then on the right hand side, you can see the individual questions that are being asked and what some of the average scores are. So the three buckets or three areas that we're focusing on are stress and anxiety and managing depression, sleep and energy level, and I know this is something that probably rings true to some of you longtime wellness coordinators. Sleep is something that year over year is, is really a struggle for smart health users. And then resilience is another area that scored particularly, particularly low. So to support smart health users, we came up with this quarterly focus, this quarterly approach. And I'm showing some screenshots of some of the, the activities that are going to go live to help support people in these different areas. So for each quarter, we're gonna focus on one of these three areas, managing stress, anxiety, depression, sleep and energy level, and resilience. And the way it's gonna to come to life is through these various means on the right-hand side. So people will see library activities for tracking like, like they're used to, um, videos, there's gonna be a lot more quick hitting video content, one to two minute videos, there's going to be more in-depth, what I'm calling e-learning lessons that are all virtual and people can walk through multi-step lessons led by industry professionals and experts. We're going to have pulse surveys to gauge if we're seeing any immediate improvement from the quarters to the beginning to the end. And then there's going to be some things outside the platform that we're doing to 
really bring this to life and make it easy for wellness coordinators and champions like like you all. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on and actually show what some of these things, what some of these activities are and how it's going to come to life in the platform and also outside of the Smart Health platform. So tracking activities, you can see an example of some of the ones that are directly tied to managing stress, anxiety, and depression. Lime Interactive, these are the quick hitting videos I mentioned on the previous slide. They're usually one to two minutes in time. They usually have some takeaways for employees um, and then maybe a question or two for knowledge retention. The lesson style activities, um, both from LimeAid's content, of LimeAid's library of content, as well as some of the healthcare authority and state partnerships, an organization called Generation Wellness is one that we're partnering closely with. There's gonna be social connection and opportunities for people to connect with each other virtually through the feed and other means. Team activities, we're also gonna be promoting resources from the, or benefits that state employees have. So, um, you know, Kaiser Permanente folks have access to the Calm app. So we're gonna be promoting that resource to those people. Um, and we're looking for other ways, other benefits to promote to other um, folks that fall outside of Kaiser Permanente. Okay, so this is a look at quarter one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a sneak peek at quarter two and some of the activities that we are gonna be building out. And I will say, especially when you think about quarter two, this is an iterative process, so there's likely to be more added to these um, activities. And another thing I wanna make sure that I'm clear on is, we are still gonna have the foundational approach of whole person well-being. So there are gonna be lots of activities that dive into physical well-being, financial well-being, and work well-being. So this approach is above and beyond that holistic foundation that we talked about. And that dovetails nicely into some additional support that we're, we're gonna be doing. So we're still in the throes of the pandemic. Um, many of you saw that we have a lot of activities that are specifically built for COVID-19 support. We're also gonna be um, tying with and connecting to BR. Washington challenge last year. So various other things that we know are important to the healthcare authority and the state of Washington as a whole. Kurt, your audio went out for a few seconds, just so you know. Um, oh. <laughs> but you're <Okay>. back. <laughs> that, that last slide, I think we missed most of what you were talking about with the BRGs. Shoot, it's out again. Okay, well, we may just need to, fortunately, Kurt's section was just about finished. Um, if he gets audio back, maybe he can come back during the q and I'm gonna change the presenter back to myself. Let's see what you see. There you go. Um, yeah. I want to thank Kurt very much for this and hand it over to Heidi to do some well-deserved celebrating. Yeah, thank you so much. So I am very lucky to have the portion of this webinar talking about successes and resources. So unfortunately, we don't have enough time to share all of the successes we experienced together in 2020, but I'd like to acknowledge a few. First one, 2020 marks Smart Health's five-year anniversary. It launched for members of PEB in 2015, and in five years, over 71,000 employees from state and public agencies and higher education institutions have chosen to use Smart Health. 
So we welcome Seb to the employer group's Washington Wellness Service during open enrollment 2019. During that 45 day open enrollment period, a little over 16,500 school employees signed up for Smart Health. And in 2020, we were able to increase enrollment to 25,283. That's over 8,200 more school employees using Smart Health. Because of our partnership, Washington Wellness and You, over 96,000 employees are now connected with Smart Health and using it to support their whole person well being. Having access to this online employee wellness program has been so important during the pandemic, and all of you helped employees connect with it. By sharing our promotional materials with staff, encouraging them to use the free wellness benefits, and providing your input, you've helped make resources and tools available to employees to benefit and support them in so many ways. Last year, we created the SEB Wellbeing Champion Network to help us reach more school employees with wellness resources. Champion's voluntary efforts supplement the work of SEB benefit administrators and wellness coordinators, and they lend their influential voices in their schools, support and encourage their peers, and help cultivate a genuine culture of employee well-being at schools. Input from SEB wellness advocates helped us create the Reward Yourself with Smart Health flyer for SEB. We saw a huge bump in enrollment and incentive qualifications because of it. In just 75 days, 3,200 additional school employees joined Smart Health and over 5,600 more qualified for the incentive. SEB and PEB wellness advocates like you helped a combined total of 33,000 members qualify for the $125 wellness incentive last year. And during these tough economic times, that little extra saving can mean so much. And it adds up, 33,000 people times $125, that's over $4,125,000 saved in out-of-pocket costs for employees. That's pretty incredible. Let's go to the next slide. So, of course, COVID put made us pivot <laughs> and you helped us decide which activities to prioritize. Like Washington Notifies, the tool that alerts users if they might have been exposed to COVID so that they can take quick action and protect themselves and others. The Washington Listens line, which provided um, someone to talk to about stress and anxiety. And during National Suicide Prevention Month in May, staff could learn how to recognize the warning signs of someone thinking about suicide and have simple ways to talk with them about it. And staff who are at risk of suicide could learn how to access the Lifeline app, make a safety plan, and use emergency resources. Because you encourage staff to use Smart Health, they could learn about these important resources and more. And look at these participation numbers for these other activities. Over 11,000 employees got flu shots. Over 7,800 generous and caring employees joined the giving campaign. Over 2,500 employees participated in Smart Health's virtual walk with the governor. And they got to experience support for employee well-being coming from the highest level of leadership in Washington, the governor. And more than 5,000 PEB and SEB members viewed monthly wellness videos, and over a thousand school employees accessed specialized generation wellness trainings. Our partners Kaiser Permanente reported record-breaking participation in their wellness workshops because staff learned about them in Smart Health and because of your support in connecting employees with Smart Health. So congratulations on these successes and more. On the next slide. You'll, I just wanted to point out real quickly, this is um, the website called our resources page, and the page offers links to other pages of our website. It's broken down by PEB and SEB, so it makes it easy. And um, on these uh, associated pages, you'll find ready-made messages and materials to promote wellness benefits. Um, our new Smart Health Promotion Toolkits will be added really soon. So watch your email for the announcement. Um, when you're on this page too, you'll be able to find um, the Find a Wellness Coordinator page. 
And um, we'd like you to check that out and make sure that um, everything is accurate or if you want to update anything, please let us know. So um, you could consider getting through 2020 during a pandemic, a success story in itself. Because of your resiliency, your flexibility and your dedication, you've continued to demonstrate care during a time of crisis and it has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated. So we want to thank all of you so much for everything you do for employees to help them have the information and support to be healthy and resilient individuals. So congratulations, and let's make this a happy and healthy new year. So thank you let's so much, Heidi. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you really did uh, end us on a high note. Thank you so much for, for sharing that data, sharing the successes. It really, so much of it really was about partnering directly with the people on this call and, and those numbers really reflect those partnerships. So we're excited to continue to do that work together. Um, we do have time for some question and answer and I think right now I've just seen one question in the question box, and that was somebody specifically asked about the due date for the ZOE 8 award. So Ron, I'm gonna let you speak to that, and then Erin, if you could help look at the chat and question box and make sure I'm not overlooking anything. And folks, if you have additional questions, type them in and we will try to get them answered for you. But Ron, can you talk about the due date for the ZO8 award? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, thanks for that mm -hmm. question. Uh, the due date for the roadmap each year is February 28th. And so keep in mind that, you know, the story that we're hoping you share with us um, is from the previous year, right? So from January through the end of December 2020. And hopefully that two months, um, you know, this month and next, uh, gives you enough time to um, share it all with us. And as a as a highly recommended suggestion, you can always use the roadmap throughout the year. You don't have to wait until this period to to upload or share your story with us. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Erin, did you notice any other questions? I know we were both kind of keeping an eye on that. Yeah, I don't see any other questions um, right now. So I, I don't know if, um, if if you guys are still wanting to put questions in the question box. Um, we can try to answer those, or if not, you can also always follow up, um, you know, with your uh, Washington Wellness Consultant with any questions um, at any time, and, and and work with them on, on those. Great. And Kurt, I know you're back. Um, I I think you were getting pretty close, but did you want to give them any parting advice about using Smart Health or the, rest of you, or the resources you showed um, as effectively as possible? Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, I guess the last parting thing I would say and what I was pointing to when I lost my audio was the site is highly configurable. And so you can see some of the unique things we're doing for the state of Washington um, is connecting to some of the um, business resource groups that are available to state employees or tying into important state initiatives like the governor's walk or, you know, getting information out there about um, a hepatitis C campaign that we did a year or so ago. We can also do that on a more of a micro level for wellness coordinators and the agencies and organizations that you all represent. So if there is something that is really important to your leadership or your employees or something that you just think would be fun to do, um, we can do a lot. We can be really flexible and promote things that are really important to each of you and each of the organizations that you all represent. And that's really what makes the, the program so powerful and exciting is when it resonates with the end users and doesn't feel like it's just full of a bunch of content from someone's library. It's when we make it feel really special and unique 
for you and your colleagues and the smart health users that are within your organizations. Thank you, Kurt. Um, we're getting a couple of additional questions, one of which I know you maybe can answer. Um, Camilla Whitaker is asking, are there any fixes for videos not working in the Limeade app? I don't know if this was iOS or something else, but it was frustrating not to have videos work on my phone. I know you've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Is there something that you think might be going on for everyone that we could speak to? Um, or might this be an individual issue? No, I haven't heard about anything, you know, widespread that is affecting like all Limeade customers or even, you know, all of the state of Washington's people. If you guys have any, any issues, I would encourage you to um, bring those to the Limeade support team. Uh, because if, if there are things that are popping up and no one's reporting, we may, we may not know that, but you know, there's a bug or a quick fix needed. So I'm really sorry to hear that there are issues with videos. Um, please report those so we can make sure we, we get it fixed. Um, there's information to do that on the bottom of the Smart Health page. There is an email as well as a phone number where you can so go directly to the Limeade support team and hopefully they can help you with that issue. But yeah, we appreciate you letting us know, Camilla, because sometimes it's a systemic issue that we can address for everybody. Um, we do have a question. Heidi, you might want to speak specifically to this, but any of us probably can. Can everyone in SEB enroll in Smart Health? I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> so all yeah. employees certainly can. All yeah. SAB employees certainly can. With PEB, yeah, there are so different. Um, yeah, go ahead, Heidi. No, go ahead. That's fine. Um, Kara, is that does that answer your question? All SAB employees can enroll in Smart Health. Um, if you're wanting to know about different layers of dependence, we might point you to the website or work with your specific question offline. But so if we didn't answer your question, let us know. She said, yes, great. Okay, great. let's see what other questions we asked. That was easy. Um, is there a link within the Limeade app to reach out to Limeade customer support? Do you know, Kurt, when they open up the Limeade app, can they link directly to a support option? Yeah, there should be. I mean, it depends on if you're on iOS or an Android, but um, yes, there should be, should be a contact us information within the app. Got it, okay. Um, I see someone else that all, has also seen that, said that she has video play issues, so. Um, hopefully it's not across the board, but clearly more than one person is having the problem. So definitely reach out to Limeade. Um, Lisa Ilahi, I'm so sorry if I just really messed up your name, asks if we're having the Smart Health competition for assessments. You know, we made the hard decision not to do that this year because so many workplaces are from home. And what, what the team told me they saw last year um, I just started in June, so a lot of this would be brand new to me as workplaces really going around physically and trying to drum up the, the support and the participation of their employees on site. So we are not doing that challenge competition this year, but um, if you love it and want to see it again, share that feedback with us and we will really think about it for um, coming years. See, we have additional questions. Do you have a step-by-step -step instruction sheet that I can give to fellow employees that want to enroll in Smart Health? Certainly, we have resources on our website. Literally, once you click on the, is it smarthealth.hca.wa.gov link, it walks you through, through the process of enrolling. Um, but there are resources on our website, and team, if any of you can find a link to pop into the chat box real quick where 
where they can click on the right link on the website, that would be helpful. But um, Tara, if you can't find it, let us let us know. Please email any follow-up questions you have that we're not getting to today. Email that number on the screen, the, the email address on the screen. We check it daily. Or call the number on the screen. We check it daily. Or reach out to your individual um, health promotion consultant. Remember, Heidi works with school employees. Aaron works with state agencies. Ron works with public employers. And Pam works with Institutes, institutions of higher education. So you can reach out to any one of them directly and they would be so happy to help you. If we don't get to your question today, please try one of those methods, general email, general phone call, or reaching out directly to your consultant. Um, let's see, now we're getting lots of questions, which is exciting. But we're getting close to the end. Will there be any interagency challenge this year? We've run them between PEB agencies in recent years from Stephen Renaud. Uh, stay tuned. Let's definitely give Stephen, I suspect maybe um, Aaron would be your consultant. So give him that feedback if you're really interested. And you know, we really like to try to do activities that are very meaningful to all of you. So we'd love to learn more about what you're interested in. Um, you're welcome. Okay, do you have any resources to help stay at home staff with ergonomics? I'm trying to think, Kurt, you might know this offhand. Is there anything on Smart Health about ergonomics? I know I've seen stuff on HCA's you know, agency website, but I'm trying to think offhand if there's something easily available to all. Um, that oh, is promoting. Sorry, do you, sorry, are you trying to? That's okay. Oh, can you hear me? Tracy, do us a favor and um, email that question into to the email address on the screen, and we'll see what we can find for you. I feel like there must be good stuff to share, but I'm not hearing Kurt right away. No, we couldn't quite hear you, Kurt. It was kind of muffled. I'll, I'll try again. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, here you are. Here you are, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, we have an activity right now. It's promoting um, standing up, stretching, taking a break. Um, because a lot of people are spending time, including myself, at their computer all day, every day. Um, so we have some, we have a one, at least one activity live for that right now. Um, but I'm not sure if that hits exactly on the um, ergonomics that the person is um, asking about. Got it. So email us that question and we'll see if we can find more for you. Um, I have one last question that I will address and then we should probably wrap. I'm excited that we've been able to do a lot and stay on time. Julie asks, once again, how can we get more information on the ZO8 program? Ron, what would be the best way for Julie or anyone to, okay, so we just sent you a link there, Julie, so you can see the link in your uh, answer. And maybe pop that link into the chat box too for everyone so everyone can see it. Yeah, it sounds like you got it handled, Kristen. Um, there's there's two different places that would be great to go. There's the webpage called Build a Wellness Program that kind of gives the overview of completing the roadmap. And then the webpage called Tracking Success that just gives you more details about the Zoate Awards specifically, but they're they're connected together. That's the main thing to keep in mind, right? right? By doing the roadmap and then sharing your story, that gives us a chance to um, see your work and you know recognize it with that annual award. So it's something you can do each and every year. Wonderful. Well, gosh, this has been the, the hour has gone fast, but I'm really so thrilled with the engagement from so many of you and what we've been able to present to you. We sure hope it's been useful. Um, very soon, we'll be sending an email to everyone on this call uh, sharing our toolkit for quarter one, resources from our diabetes prevention program, and 
the link to, to the meetings and materials webpage where you can see these materials. And remember, we have lots of other resources on our website, and we're continually trying to share things with you that you can use immediately to promote well-being for your staff. Forwardable, forwardable messages, flyers, and, and other tools that we hope can really enhance the hard efforts that you are making on behalf of the staff in your organization. So please reach out to us. Use the email on the screen or the phone number on the screen. Call your individual health promotion consultant. Stay in touch. What you tell us really impacts what we do. So thank you so much for taking the time today, and we'll see you soon. All right, I'm going to end for all.